dad's generation. Uh, Jesus is at the door. I, I, I know that we people say that and, and it's cliche, but all you have to do, Jesus said, no one knows the day or the hour, but just like you see a tree begin to fall leaves, leaves begin to fall, you know that winter is nigh. So you know that when these things come about, that Jesus is close and coming. And so we need to be listening for one voice. One voice. Paul said it best, I think. He said, there are many voices in this world, yet none without distinction. So if I were to turn the lights off in this room, uh, and we were all maybe even blindfolded even, uh, because of what we needed to do, uh, even blindfolded even for the sake of the experiment. And the only way that we were able to get out of this room would be by the leading of voices. And if just just say I had put another 30 or 40 people in here that were strangers, of course we would understand each other's voices because we, we know each other. But then it goes even beyond knowing a voice. It has to be knowing a person's character because the enemy has the ability to mimic people. But what do I mean by that? Uh, the Bible says that the enemy has transformed himself into angels of light so they can look the same. They can act the same in instances. They have the same type of mannerisms. But one of the things that's distinct from each individual is the content of their character. That's what Martin Luther King said. Don't judge me by the color of my skin, but the content of my character. God's character has a certain moral uh, compass. It, it, it sounds differently and it, and it walks and talks differently. And so when we're listening, talking about the voice, if it were black, what we'd be listening for is for a person's distinct characteristics. Gave that analogy some months ago when some some years ago when I was talking about someone's, you know, you know your mother's character, you know your father's character, and you know somebody wouldn't send you to the store and ask for a quart of beer and, and, and some cigarettes. So nobody just couldn't come and tell you that that's what, you, that that's what your mama said or that's what your pop said or that's whoever, whoever. You know what I'm saying? That nobody couldn't come and tell me that my dad told me, he told them that uh, he wanted uh, uh, three, three vials of crack. Nobody couldn't tell me that because I know my dad's character. Even, even, even in blindness, and that's what that means. I don't, I haven't seen him. I haven't contacted with him. But because someone sent the message, I know what he would say and what he wouldn't say. How much more in these days and times when you have people who are in the faith, out of the faith? You got the news. You got people who are uh, uh, in positions of authority. Everybody's saying something different. Stay away from people. No, it's all right to pray. Don't pray with them people. Don't lay at this. All of these different things. What? All of these different things. When you make things, I'm looking at so. So one of the things that we're going to be talking about is watch who you listen to. Hey, Amen. Today is just pink day. We didn't plan this. I'm sorry if y'all didn't get the memo. <laughs> the pastor came over here. He's wearing pink. Praise the Lord. <laughs> That's the thing. And so in, in 2 Corinthians, I said, that. watch what you watch, who you listen to. 2 Corinthians 11, verses 1 through 6, talking about one voice. 2 Corinthians 11. Verses 1 through 6. And I will, I will begin reading. Would to God ye could bear with me in a little folly. And indeed, bear with me. For I am jealous over you with a godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtility, so your minds should be corrupted from 
the simplicity that is in Christ Jesus. I'm going to pause right there, and then I'm, we're going to go down. Here's Paul the Apostle. He's, he's talking to, of course, Church Corinth, uh, and he's saying, you know, I'm godly of you, I'm jealous of you with a godly jealousy. I espouse you to one husband. He's talking about Christ. I, 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 I've given you to, to, to one doctrine. Uh, I, I've given you to, it, it's, 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 it's one doctrine. It's one person that I've espoused you to. But I fear, lest by any means as the serpent beguile, beguile also means to deceive. The enemy, when he came into the Garden of Eden, just to show what he was talking about a little bit, he didn't come with anything real crafty. All they did was ask, did God really say that? And if you're not sure on which foundation you stand in the word of God, you got some people that ask you that. Did God really say that? Right, right. Do the Bible really say what it's saying, say what it's saying, what it's saying, what it's saying? Yeah. And so that's a, that's, a, that's a trick to plant a seed of doubt. That's why the Bible says one of the uh, parts of the arm is the helmet of salvation. Understanding what you what you were saved from, understanding what salvation is, breastplate of righteousness, understanding what righteousness is, right standing with God, because what it quenches the fiery darts of the enemy, the shield of faith actually quenches the fiery darts of the enemy. Faith. Faith in what? Not just faith in faith, faith in God, faith in God's word. So here comes the enemy trying to take you. Paul said. So your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ Jesus. God is saying it's not complicated. You got a lot of people that will teach so many different complicated things. It's not, it's really not complicated. It, it's really simple. The, the message of the gospel is simple. Jesus said, if you want to follow me, deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me. That's simple. Reading the word of God, praying, all these things are just, these are simple things to follow. Keeping our minds uh, 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 free uh, of corruption. And sin. These are things that are simple. You got people want to take you in every which way. Well, this mean over there, and then the Hebrew, and then the, yeah, it's good to study the Hebrew and the Greek and everything because I believe that the Bible needs to be studied and not read. But at the end, the overall message of Jesus Christ and the God is simple. It really is. And so, what Paul is saying, the enemy came in through his subtility. Now, subtility means subtle. I, I tell people all the time, if the enemy wants you to be an alcoholic, he's not going to come to you with a 40 ounce. That would be kind of like a dead giveaway. That, you, you, you run me off. And I tell people that the Bible says that the enemy has transformed himself as an angel of light. So that means that he's not with horns and a tail. If somebody comes to me with horns and a tail and they all red, and I'm running in the opposite direction. I'm sorry. You scared me. I'm gone. Even in my sin, I'm running from that. I'm sorry. So he's subtle, meaning that his tactics are subtle. He sows a little bit of doubt. A little bit of false doctrine. When he, when Jesus was tempted, if you remember, Jesus was tempted three times. The Spirit of the Lord led him into the wilderness. He was tempted three times. One of the times, the the devil quoted Psalms ninety one. If you be the Son of God, throw yourself down, lest you dash your foot against the stone. Angels gonna bear you up. He quoted Psalms ninety one. He twisted it. But it was the word, so the devil knows the word. And so here's Paul saying, don't allow this to happen. Don't allow someone to cause you to err from the simplicity, which is in Christ Jesus. Keep it simple. For if he, verse 4, that cometh, preacheth another Jesus. Uh-oh. What you mean? You got multiple Jesuses? Yeah, you, you got some people that will preach another Jesus or if you receive another spirit which ye have not received or another gospel which ye have not accepted ye might bear well with it for I suppose I was not with not a wit beyond the chief apostles 
But though I be rude in speech, yet not in knowledge, but we have been thoroughly made manifest among you in all things. Paul is saying if they come to you with another doctrine, with another gospel, with another Jesus, and, 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 and what I mean by that, and we're taught, we started out the, the, the message title, One Voice, listening for the voice of Jesus, listening for God, so important in these days and time, listening to God. It saddened me that, 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 that and we're going to continue to, 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 to gather here, but that there are sometimes there will be people in a, because of what's going on. I, I, I just call the spade a spade. Because of what's going on and the numbers and everything, people are starting to shut their churches down again. But we're going to continue to come here. Why? Because God didn't tell me to shut down. I, he healed lepers and he went into the sick and the byways. How, how, how can I? The Great Commission didn't have a, 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 a what do you call that? A, a, a clause in it that said hey, you can do this, but if this happened, I, 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 I don't. Get, so, but if, if you listen to different voices, you're not listening to Jesus. What did Jesus tell you to do? We have to listen to what Jesus tells us to do. Job, his wife, curse God and die. You are all you going through all this pain. We done lost everything. Just curse God. No, I, I gotta listen to the voice. Had Adam, Jesus, I mean God told Adam, because you have hearkened unto the voice of your wife. He wasn't listening to God. Had Adam had stated, no, oh, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna, we gonna do this because God said such and such. And so, there's so many different instances where there are many voices. Paul said it best. There are many voices in this world, yet without distinction. I, I don't care what they, what title they have. I don't care how long they've been doing it. It could be apostle, bishops, whoever. If it don't sound like Jesus, don't you follow it. I don't care how many people they got in their congregation. I don't care how many television, TV cameras looking at them. If it don't sound like Jesus, I'm not following it. And so he said, if they come to you and preach another Jesus, which whom you have not preached, or if you have received another spirit, which you have not received, or another gospel, which you have not accepted, you might well bear with him. For I suppose I was not a wit beyond the chief very cheapest apostles. He's, he's basically he, 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 he's saying I, I, I'm not I'm, I'm 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 different than the others, and you have to understand that when Judas did what he did, uh, uh, they chose Matthias, uh, Matthias, Matthias. I want to say his name is. They chose another apostle, but Jesus chose Saul. You don't hear really too much about Matthias, even though they picked him. And that's to go to show you sometimes man can have an idea of who he wants to use, but God got an idea of who he wants to use and who God wants to use. That's who God is going to use. And so, but though I be rude in speech, what he's saying, he's saying, I, I'm not, Paul said it so many times, he said, I, I, don't, I, I, I'm not, I don't have eloquent speech. I, I don't have enticing words of man's wisdom, but a demonstration of the spirit and of power. What he was saying was in that day, there were a lot of people who were great orators. They, the Greeks, they could speak well and they could, they could, they could, they could draw a big crowd. He said, I, I ain't come on that note. But, 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 but don't, 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 don't judge me by what you hear me say. Just judge me by the, the life I live. Sometimes the Bible says that we are living epistles. There are people who you would never open your mouth to that will get saved off of how you live your life. Mm -hmm. They will watch you wanting to really find a, find a reason to criticize the gospel, but in watching you, they get saved. Mm -hmm. Man, that sister right there, I bet something, man, she, man, she don't act like other people do when, tri when trials and tribulations, something different, something different about this brother right there. I've been watching him for the long, man, I, the people watching you, they don't even tell you they're watching you. They just watching. But God is using even that for their salvation. 
So Paul said, I, I didn't come on that note. I, I came on the note to where I'm going to demonstrate to you the power of the gospel. But we, were made, but we have been thoroughly made manifest among you in all things. He's saying I, 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 the manifestation of who we are, the manifestation of who I am has been made known to all of you. So one voice, listen only to Jesus. Sounds simple enough. Why is it important to listen only to Jesus? In Luke chapter 9, starting at verse 28, Luke chapter 9, starting at verse 28, I have various, very, very, various favorite portions of scripture. I said various, various, I don't know if that's a word or not, but you know. Uh, <laughs> Various favorite portions of scripture. This is one of my favorites. And it came to pass about an eight days after these sayings, he took Peter, John, and James. This is Jesus. He's saying he's taking three of the disciples. And they went up to a mountain to pray. And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered. He changed right in front of him. They call it the one of the uh, illustrations, they call it the Mount of Transfiguration uh, in some Bibles. And his raiment was white and glycerin. And behold, there talked with him two men, which were Moses and Elias, which is Elijah, Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spake of his decease which he should accomplish at Jerusalem. So now I, 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 I use this, you know, because we have to understand that even death doesn't have power over us. Here is Elijah and Moses. Moses had been on over a thousand years, Elijah over 800 years, and yet they're talking to Jesus. Proof that in one, you go one or two places immediately. Ain't no in between. Catholic people, they teach purgatory. You, you can just be in and somebody can pray you into heaven. The devil is a lie. You in one or two places when, you're, when your eyes close and you leave this realm. You either in the, you either in heaven or you're in hell. There's no in between. And so here is Elijah and Moses in glory talking to Jesus who appeared in glory and spake of his decease. They talked about him. Basically, you're going to be you're going to be crucified. I mean, you're going to you're going to go. You're going to go. And what should be accomplished at Jerusalem? This this is going to happen. But Peter and they that were with him were heavy with sleep. And when they awake, they saw his glory and the two men that stood with him. And it came to pass as they departed from him, Peter said unto Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Not knowing what he said. Of course he's not knowing. You can equate Jesus to Moses and Elijah. You, no, you, the Moses and Elijah, they did some great things, but we're not going to put them on the same type of realm as Jesus. But Peter, that's why I said they didn't know, didn't know what he said. A lot of people run off and create religions off of what they think. Let's create this little section, and let's create this little sector, and let's do this, and let's do that. While he thus spake, there came a cloud and overshadowed them, and they feared as they entered the cloud. And there came a voice out of the cloud saying, this is my beloved son, hear him. And the voice was passed. Jesus was found alone. And, it, and they kept it close and told no man in those days any of those things which they had seen. God was saying, I, I know you, you, I use my prophets and Moses and I use Elijah. Don't get caught up in the vessel because sometimes the vessel, depending upon who it is, can lead you astray. You need to listen for him. 
If you listen for Jesus, if we turn the lights off in this room and it was pitch black and everybody had a blindfold on, Jesus could lead us. Because we know his character. We know who he is. We know what he's saying. We know what he said. Those are foundational scriptures. Those, those are things being led by the Spirit. That's what, the, that's what it means to be led by the Spirit. Not to say that we don't have emotions. We do have emotions. We do have feelings. The Bible didn't say we were resolved from those. He just said don't be led by them. There's some stuff I just got to get over. Ah, you hear people say I was in my feelings, but my feelings didn't lead my actions. The enemy would have you to be led by your feelings and your emotions. You feel a particular way. Uh, you just wiped off of that feeling. Well, I feel, you know, uh, I, I just don't feel like doing whatever. Whatever it is, I don't feel. I need to seek God and ask him what his direction is at that particular moment. I'll never forget talking about one voice uh, several instances where people 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 get upset with you when you follow God that's that's another uh, I'm, I'm going ahead of myself but when you're listening to the voice of Jesus and what you're listening to doesn't line up with their interpretation of what it is they think that you should do people get upset even in your own house you got to tell nah you can't play that in here nah nah I, 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 want, nah, I, I know that you think that's okay but I, I don't want that on my table I, nah I, I take that down or whatever it is we got to be bold because we're listening to the voice of Jesus we saw what happened when in, in Ai and in, in, in the camp of Israel when one person was allowed to bring something in had, had Joshua would just said, well, now I'm just going to let this go ahead and pass, whole Israel would have been torn up. They had already lost one battle behind what they had allowed in the camp, even though they didn't know it at the time. But once it was revealed, they had a choice to make. So I was in this, was in this church. I didn't know what they believed at the time we were, we were going to this church. Life had been going for a little while and I was in the Bible studies and got to talk and I never said anything about the call of God on my life. Sometimes God just says, be quiet. Mm -hmm. Just be quiet. You don't have to tell about it. I'm a servant. So I got to tell you, well, you know, I know this and I, I ain't about that. So I was sitting around in the Bible studies and the elders got around to the elders. Man, brother, no, 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 it's just word. So they brought us in at a meeting. My wife and I, I'm sitting in the elder board. All of these older people, they've been in the church 30 and 40 years. We want We want you to Teach the word of God right here in this church. 500 member church. Instant. It's like, whoa, wow. 500 member. Wow. To the person that's carnal, me, I don't, I don't get caught up in that. I, I listen for Jesus. I listen for the voice of God. I hear what you said, but do Jesus want so I, I, I'm listening to them. I don't care how many years you've been doing. I don't care how many titles, degrees you got. I'm listening for God. Okay. So I'm listening and everything. Well, brother, you know, one of the things that we teach here is that uh, baptism by water is what saves. Now, do you believe that? I say, uh, no, I don't, I don't believe that. I, my Bible tells me that Jesus alone saves. And yes, we can do that as an act of obedience after we say, but the water don't do nothing. If I go down the devil, I'm coming back up the devil. The water ain't do nothing for me. We cheap in the blood of Jesus. If I say the blood of Jesus plus you dipping in what? No. Well, brother, I think you should reconsider and think about it. And um, and, other, and they started. Oh, now, now this now, now this manifestation of the angels of light mm -hmm. transforming themselves right in front of my eyes. They were hot about that doctrine. Well, brother, uh, we're gonna send you some emails and everything. And also, okay, send me some emails. Then what they did, because it was pretty much, an, I would say, what would you say, like 80% white board, maybe, about 80%. They sent a brother to me. <laughs> hey, brother, I'm going to take you out to breakfast and everything so we can talk about it. They still, they still trying to bring me in. They want well, your own leadership. So I said, okay, brother. He said, I'm going to bring some scripture. I said, now, you can bring some scripture, but I want to, with all due respect, I want me, me to be able to bring mine. Because what you're saying, I'm going to be able to, okay. So we sat down, and we, we sat down, forget McDonald's, or one of those little, you know, little restaurants where we got breakfast and everything. He's starting to go over the scriptures. He talking about what about you listening. And I know what the word of God says, so I'm like, okay. 
So I took him to the book of Acts and I showed him that while someone was yet preaching, the Holy Ghost fell on them. Then they said, does anyone forbid water? So I asked him, I said, now, if the Holy Spirit fell on those that were here receiving the preaching, doesn't that mean that they were saved? Would the Holy Ghost invade someone that would not be saved? They were saved, so why did they get water baptized afterwards? If baptism is what saves them, brother, shut his Bible up. I see that this isn't going any further. I'm done with this meeting. I'm, whoa. Wait a second, brother. We, we're just talking to me. You gave a scripture. I gave a scripture. Now you hot. Mm -hmm. Brother wouldn't talk to me. Walk by me in church. Wouldn't speak. Wouldn't do nothing. I say, see that devil. That's, that, that, that's what I'm talking about. This is my beloved son. Don't hear them elders. Don't hear what hear him. And so if I had not been listening to God and looking at what they were trying to present to me, hello, Jesus, on the mount, and he said, I'm going to get all of these things. I'm going to put you in charge. All these things you're going to have. I can't get caught up in the glistener and, and, and all of that stuff. I said, no, and then we ended up leaving. That wasn't the first time. There were other times. We go into church and we tell the past before we get there, hey, brother, we, we got our own ministry, but, you know, I'm willing to serve. And they loved us because we would go out, we would serve. We, anytime they had an outreach for the community, we were out there with the pallet jacks, helping people load food in the car and everything like that and everything. But then there came a time when God said, now nah, it's time to, it's time to go because there's some stuff that we were seeing. It was, some, it, was time, it was time to go. They got mad and mm -hmm. cut us off. Mm -hmm. I said, well, oh, <laughs> Are you upset? I told you to begin with what I was called to do. And so all of these different instances, there are a lot of people who I saw serving, but were serving miserably. No joy. They were just... Did you take some prune juice before you came to service with... Where's the joy of the Lord? I'm, I'm looking for Jesus when I come to the church. I should feel better when I come out than when I came in. I might be coming down, waiting with oppression, but I got Sister Sour Faith. Yes, yes, yes. So I'm like, well, okay. And I saw this in the church, people being run off. People would come in and be like a revolving door. They would come in and they would just leave out. Come in because they were looking for Jesus. There are some people who don't look for Jesus. There are some people who've come here. Mm -hmm. They were looking for the crowd. Mm -hmm. The crowd. They were looking for a clique. They weren't looking for Jesus. Because mm -hmm. if they were looking for Jesus, it wouldn't matter. Two or more gathered together, there he is in the midst. Yeah. Yeah. Two or more gathered together, there he is in the midst. Jesus only took 12 people to overturn the world. He only took 12 disciples. So if you got 1,200, glory be to God. But he only needed 12 to turn the world upside down. And so God got me delivered. And I talked about some weeks ago about people being delivered from people. Mm -hmm. Delivered from people. They said that they hated Jesus without cause. Right. Sometimes we got to stop wondering or worrying about why somebody don't like us. It's because they hated you without cause. They have a reason. Yeah. The enemy has people just like the Lord has people. The enemy got people. Guess what? They ain't all outside the church. He got them in the church. Yeah. To try to throw you off of your path, to try to throw, to get really what the really what the trick of the enemy is is church hurt. He tries to run people off, but now when you're rooted and grounded in love, it's not that you're gonna leave Jesus. You might leave that spot, but you ain't gonna leave Jesus. There's some spots that we didn't left, but we never stop serving Jesus because we gotta listen to His voice. And we understand that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, spiritual wickedness, and high places. So when people offend us, we have to recognize, okay, you know what? I recognize what I'm dealing with, and I'm going to deal with it in the spirit realm. I'm going to pray about it. I'm going to release them up to Jesus and keep moving forward for Jesus. So here's Jesus, he came into this cloud, and then the Father said, this is my beloved son, hear him. They didn't tell anybody because God, God, God didn't give them the unction to tell anybody. But they had to have kept that mindset. 
listen to him. Listen to him. And so now sometimes when you're listening, listening to the voice of Jesus and you're a follower of Jesus, there are times when it may get a little dark. And that's why I was talking about what I was talking about earlier. 18. Don't judge his presence by prestige. Luke 7 verses 18 through 23. <clears throat> Luke 7 verses 18 through 23. And the disciples of John shewed, all, shewed him all these things and John calling unto him two of his disciples said to them Jesus saying art thou he that should come or look we for another now you're talking about the forerunner for Jesus you're talking about John the Baptist Wow, man, he said he ate locusts and honey, and he, and he was just all, he was going to be the form. In fact, later on, he ends up baptizing Jesus. Then, of course, it's, you know, the, 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 it says the uh, dove descended, and, you know, this is my son of whom I'm well pleased. Uh, this is John. If anybody should have known who Jesus was, it would have been, it should have been John. But, one of the things, and this is the reason why the Jews miss Jesus, this is the reason why a lot of people often miss Jesus. Jesus was both, not what, Jesus is both lion and lamb. Now, if you look at the prophecies in the Bible, the wonderful counselor, the government's going to be on his shoulders, and all of these great and wondrous things, the Jews were expecting he's going to come in here and overturn these Romans and we're going to be in power. Come on, Jesus. You show up now. I'm ready now. They all, you talking about black lives and Jesus life matter. Yeah, we're going we to run this. Yeah, we're going to. Yeah. But when he came born in a manger, wait a second, hold on. Kings don't get born in no manger. Wait, wait, wait a second. But he was the Lamb of God. How fitting for a lamb to be born in the stable amongst the other animals. This time, he came around to be a sacrificial lamb. The disciples kept asking, when is it going to be the time for you to set up your kingdom? They were missing it. And Jesus kept telling, listen, it ain't for you to know the days and the time. He's telling them, stop focusing on that. Stop focusing on whether or not it's the time for me to set up rule, rent, all that. Don't worry, just follow me. But when you get caught up in prestige, again, crowds, things of that nature, and all of that, you miss Jesus. And so a lot of the Jews miss Jesus because they said that can't be our Messiah. No, that, no, no, because he's supposed to be king, ruler. We supposed to be on top. The Romans supposed to be out. No, so here is John. Are you the one? Or shall we look for another? Are, are, are you are you the? G um, is there anything that you can just? Show? And so Jesus, I love how I love how God does. God, Jesus didn't answer yes or no. Uh, he, he, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't, and, and so let me, let me go into the scripture. It says, and the men would come unto him saying, they say John the Baptist sent us unto thee saying, art thou he that should come or should we look for another? In that same hour, he cured many of their infirmities and the plagues of the evil, and of the evil spirits and unto the, unto many that were blind, he gave sight. Then Jesus answering said, said unto them. Go your way. Tell John what things ye have seen and heard. I'm finna. Okay, you want to know if I'm the you. You want to know if I'm the one. You you got okay. The blind see. The lame walk. The lepers are cleansed. The deaf hear. The dead are raised. And the poor. 
the gospel and to the poor the gospel is preached. He's saying, you want to know if I'm the one, just look. Just, just, just look. Just look. Just, just look at, just look at, just look at my life. Don't ask me if I'm saved. Just, just watch me. Don't ask me if I'm blessed. Just, just look at my life and see. But see, Jesus always pointed to the Father. You ain't got to wrestle and tongue wrestle with people. Just take that up with Jesus. Well, how is it? What is it? That, no, just, that's, that's, that's Jesus. And blessed is he who is who has, whosoever is shall not be offended in me. There were some people because of what Jesus did, they were offended. Jesus said, "A prophet is not without honor, except what is in his own house and in his own country." Sometimes our worst critics will come from the very people we grew up with. They couldn't get over how they saw Jesus when he was five, six years old. Who are you to tell me? I remember when you was at the club. I remember when you was. That's talking about us. Of course, Jesus never sinned. But sometimes people uh, 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 relate commonality with anointing. They can't see the anointing because they can't get past your flesh. Hear him. Forget everything else. Listen for God. God can speak through a baby if you listen and you know his voice. God spoke through a donkey. And if, and if the prophet hadn't listened to the donkey, he sure would have been dead and in a doornail because that angel was going to wipe him face, wipe him out. He had to be able to listen to God. We got to be able to listen. One voice. He ain't speaking in five different languages. One voice. One point. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So when people be coming with, well, God doing something new today, and he doing something da 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 da, it better line up with this word. If he doing something new, it's going to be new and from the word new, but not another dot. No, 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 no. But you'd be surprised at how many people never learn the voice of Jesus. There's some things, and I, and I give this illustration, there's some things. You know there's some stuff that he's not going to ask you to do. Nobody, I can come to you today and say, uh, Willie says such and such. And if it don't line up with his character, you're going to be like, no, nah, Willie ain't say that to you. He ain't you know why? Because you know him. There's relationship. There's intimacy. There's a, there's a relationship. There's a deep intimacy beyond anything that anybody can imagine. How much more with God? So when people are speaking and they say, God told you, you say, whoa, whoa, wait a second. Mm -mm, hold on. Something in my spirit, though. I, uh, I don't, mm, nah, I, I, maybe, 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 maybe I could be, you know, wrong, but I'm going to pray about it because whatever he told you, he's going to tell me. He's going to confirm his word. He said, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. So God is not going to leave someone off on an island. God told me he told you to uh, uh, move to New York. Okay, so when God tell me what he told you, then I'll go ahead and I'll move to New York. But until then, I'm just going to put that on the shelf up there. We have to be listening to God and not judge presence by prestige. Jesus don't come in the way that we think he should come. He comes in the way that he wants to. Jesus is with you. Mark chapter 4, verses 35 through 41. Mark chapter 4, verses 35 through 31. And the same day when the evening was come, he said unto them, let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind. And the waves beat into the ship, 
so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him. And he saith unto them, unto him, and they, excuse me, and say unto him, rather, Master, carest not that we perish. And he arose and rebuked the wind, saying, Peace be still. And the wind ceased. And there was great calm. And he saith unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly one to another. What manner of man is this? That even the wind and the sea should obey him. Here's Jesus. He let the cat out of the bag with the first verse. Verse 35. Let us pass over to the other side. If Jesus said you're getting to the other side, you're getting to the other side. If Jesus said it, it's going to happen. If God said it, it cannot come back to him void. He said, my word can't return unto me void. He said, I'm not a man that I should lie. He said, I am God, I change of not. And so he said, and when they had sent away the multitude, they took the ship, they took him even, uh, they took him even as he was in the ship and there was another ship of and there were also other little ships with them. And a great storm arose, and the way, and the, whew, tongue tied. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship so that it was full. So wait a second, you mean to tell me that stuff happened when Jesus right there with me? Jesus was on the boat, but the storm still arose. And we know that the storm was not of God because Satan can't cast out Satan and the divided house can't stand. Jesus rebuked the wind. He can't rebuke himself. So here comes something from the enemy and the waves beat in the ship. But Jesus was right there with him. There are a lot of times we try to determine whether or not God is with us by what's going on. Uh, and you got people like Job's friends. I don't even know why they still call them Job's friends in the Bible. I don't know friends like that. They they trying to get the man to basically say you something in your life you didn't send it all the time. No one see we got the benefit of looking at the Bible. We saw what was happening behind the scene. Has thou considered my servant Job? And God says, okay, all that you have is in hand. But God has not stopped doing that. God has not stopped allowing coronaviruses and, and different things and, and uprises and things to happen. And so people are trying to figure out where God is in all of this. And God is saying, I'm working something in you. Sometimes God wants to see where you're at. Oh, you say you will, you say you got great faith. You say you believe me, but the sun is shining and everything is smooth sailing. But let me throw a little bit of turmoil in your life. Let me allow some things to pop up. Then I'm going to see what you really believe. I was saying on, on social media the other day, I said, this is when you see what the true believers in Christ believe. How are they walking during this time? Are they throwing their hands up like, oh, Lord, the sky is falling? Or are they saying it's going to be all right? Because if God allow it, my Bible doesn't lie when it says all things are working together for our good. We are still to call according to his purpose. I don't care what's going on. And the fact that Jesus is still on the ship lets me know that everything is going to turn out all right. All they had to do was go back to the word that he spoke to them. We get to the other side. We're getting to the other side. I, I, I know I upset some people sometimes. I, I don't like them. I accept some people sometimes. But I tell them, you, if you're a true Christian, you cannot threaten somebody with death. What you talking about? Well, 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 you know, they, you know it's a lot of people down. I said, and? <laughs> and now they like the one dog. He, he stuck me with that one. I said, and? I said, if you, threat, if you threaten me with eternal life and being with Jesus as a bad thing, you need to question what God you're serving. 
If I got my appointed time, if I got my appointed date, where am I going? If I really believe that, if I know in my heart of heart, I tell people I'm going to be back. The Bible says that we're coming back to reign with Christ and not as some ghostly thing. It said that we're going to have a body. Jesus walked around with a body. He ate fish. He said, see, this is flesh and blood. They don't, they ghosts don't have that. So I know I got an assured faith. You can't threaten me. Coronavirus, coronavirus, holy virus, I don't care what kind of virus it is. If it's my time to go, I'll thank you. I'll see y'all later. See you on the other side. Maybe shed a few tears because you're going to miss me. But don't cry too long because we're going to be together again. Amen. That's the type of faith that God wants us to have. But I got people, people who are born again. Throwing up their head, oh, no, what are we going to do? I'm like, wait a second. Wait a second. You were just shouting last week. Mm -hmm. But you got the victory. Where the victory went at? So here is the disciples saying, Oh Lord, don't you care that we perish? And Jesus is like, Really? Now I just told y'all jokers. He ain't calling jokers. I'll just throw that in for him. I just told y'all jokers that we was going to get to the other side. I'm sleeping while the storm going on. That ought to tell you something. If I'm asleep, that means if I'm on the boat, ain't nothing happening. Jesus is saying, if I'm in the house, don't worry. I'm, I'm in your house. I'm with you. I'm with you. And so Jesus arose, arose, arose rather, and he just said three words, peace be still. <coughs> that's all we got to do sometimes. With everything that's going on and things that try to bombard us and try to crowd our minds, peace be still in the name of Jesus. Turn off CNN and, and, and Fox and, 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 and WNBC and turn on some worship music. Get into the real news. This is the real news. I understand I got done with the weather report and everything, but I ain't going to focus on that. The Bible says whatever things are true, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are good report. He said meditate on these things. He's given us our prescription for peace. I refuse, I told people, I said, I refuse to allow, to keep being bombarded with that, and then keep, the next thing you know, you speaking what the world's speaking. We're supposed to sound different, look different, act different. And so that's what the world is looking at. Those same people that are looking back, they're looking at, okay, let me see. Now, I know I'm, I'm thrown off. The per people that's, this people that ain't saying, I know I'm jacked up. I'm going to see how Shantae had a list. I'm going to see how she Oh, she ain't worried about her life. She got more peace than anything. She ain't worried about what. What did they shut it down or shut it up or let it down or let it go? She still got the same peace. I want that type of peace. I want the type of peace that when a storm going on, I'm just like Jesus. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Resting. That's what the Bible wants us. Jesus said, my peace I leave unto you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth. The world gives a that kind of peace, but it's a false peace. They want you to trust in the stock market and, and if this going good and if that line up. And if that peace, man, you'll be on a roller coaster. Every time the news come on, you'll be like this. I'm high, I'm up, I feel good, I feel that. I'm no, 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 no. I want this peace that Jesus is talking about. This that this that, that don't care kind of peace. I don't care what happened. <laughs> I'm blessed. We have an eternal destination. Even if the sky fall out tomorrow, I'm not going to panic or worry. We have an eternal destination. My ticket has already been punched. I'm just waiting for it to be, I'm just waiting to be delivered to Jesus. So, John chapter 15. Verses starting at verse 18. His GPS couldn't lead to the rest. But we still have peace. And this is why I say that. Verse 18. If the world hate you, know that it hated me before it hated you. Jesus say, I he didn't say this, but I'm sad. He say, stop tripping. <laughs> if the world hated you, Know that, it, and when we think about the world, sometimes we we, 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 we we have a level of expectancy about, you know what I'm saying, friends, families, loved ones. But if they're in the world, we, Jesus said, if you love mother, brother, sister, father, Lord, you, 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 you're not worthy of, you got to be expecting these things. He said, I ain't come to bring peace but a sword. And that's something that times I rob people to rub people the wrong way. 
And I was, I was even telling my uh, our son, I said, I'll even check my sister and cut her off. We, we really, we bled, we grew up together. But this vibe, this word of God is more serious than that. I, I got, Jesus said, who is my brother, my sister, my mother, but them that are doing the will of the Father. He said, I'm going to draw a line in the sand. Either you with God or you against God. And if you with God, you with me. And if you against God, then you against me. Jesus is saying, I want that type of allegiance. That, so in understanding that, we, we don't get in our feelings when we get rejected by the world. Oh, Lord, so I said, don't text me no more. <laughs> this person don't call no more. <laughs> this person won't come by. I'm busy. No more. Stop it. <laughs> Jesus said, I did you a favor by subtracting that person out of your life. I did you a favor. I, I, I protect you. I'll protect you. Even amongst the people. Listen, I, Jesus, okay, plucked out. And you wonder, wow, wow, wow. When, and sometimes we don't understand. God will say, that person didn't mean no good. I had to remove them. Even family. God will say, no. That, and then he'll place people in your life. I tell people all the time. You got relatives and you got family. Everybody that's blood ain't, ain't, ain't family. And everybody that's family ain't blood. But we connected by the blood of Jesus. God. That makes us family. <clears throat> if ye were of the world, the world would love us. If you are of the world, that's, that's why a lot of times, you know, Paul said this. Paul did say, I became all things unto all men that I might by some means gain some. So if my motive is to gain you, yes, I will come around, I'll play space as much as lies in me, you know, I'll play pool, I'll do, I'll do whatever it is, but my, my motive now, my mission is to gain you, not just to hang out. Because if I come around just to hang out, just to hang, the Bible says evil, evil communication corrupt good habits. So if I'm hanging around a, a, a bunch of jokers that's cussing and throwing, doing smoking and everything, it won't be long before I'm doing the same. Because the Bible does say that evil communication, fellowship, that's what that means, communic fellow, corrupts good habit. So, but if I'm doing it with the intent on winning you to Christ, then that's another mission. Then one of the things that I saw in the Bible that he did with the disciples, he sent them out by two. I, I need somebody accountable. I need to send me an accountability partner. There ain't too many places I don't take. This is uh, Lady Brandon with me because especially when we're doing different type of counseling or whatever it is, we just have to be there for each other. Have to be able, the Bible says a three cord is not easily broken. If one fall, the other one is there to lift them up. So we have to be able to be there for each other. There may be sometimes that there's some things that you're weak and then the other person can say, no, nah, brother, let's, let's, let's come on. I see you falling into that. Oh, no, nah, sister, let's come on. We got to be there for each other to love each other in that way. And so, but this is talking about if the world, if you were of the world, the world would love its own. In other words, if you were down with what they were down with, they wouldn't even bother you. They wouldn't care. You, you down with them. I, I ain't catch hell until I started serving God. When I was doing, I was out clubbing, drinking. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't going through no torque. It was when I started serving him. Then I recognized I got a flesh that I got to crucify on a day-to-day basis. -day. Then I realized that I got an enemy that's constantly warring against my soul. That's when the fight began. And I began conscious of it, like, whoa, that's been going on. But the whole time I was on one side, so the enemy was like, I already got him. I ain't. So the world. If we were of the world, the world would love its own. But because you're not of the world, and I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. That's a strong word, but that's that's what act the world hates you. Now, it may not come out all the time. You can have peace with some people, but let the wrong topic come up. And you speak what the word of God would have you to speak. You're going to find out real soon how good and cool you is with that person. Let the wrong topic come up and you speak what the word of God would have you to speak on that topic. Amen. There is going to be, might be some knives drawn. You're going to have to go ahead and say, all right, brother, sister, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, well, I ain't mean to shoot. Some people get angry now. I've seen it. 
Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will also keep yours. Persecution comes. Persecution doesn't always come in the form of a crown of thorns or a, or, or, or a cross. Persecution comes when they ostracize you. Persecution comes when they talk about you like a dog. Persecution comes when you're not invited to the same birthday party that other people are invited to. Persecution comes when they, when, when they don't call you, when they don't text you, when you ain't the one that they want to be around. That's what persecution is. Jesus said he came unto his own and his own received him not. <clears throat> But all of these things will they do unto you for my sake, my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. I don't care what religion, and we, we went over in the Bible study some weeks ago, we went over all different types of religion. You'd be surprised at how many people think that they are connected with God because, you know, Jesus was a prophet, he was a good man and everything. But he said, these things they will, these things they will do unto you for my name's sake. Because they know not him that, him that sent me is the Father. They think that they can get to God without Jesus, but they don't even know the Father. He said, if you, don't have the, if you don't have the Son, you don't have the Father or the Son. But they're blinded by that. And so he's saying they think that they, they, they know not them, him that sent me. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not sinned. But now they have no cloak for their sin. Told you sometimes people in darkness, you come in there with that flashlight. You haven't been in the dark a long time. So what the worst thing you want somebody to do? Flash a light in your face. That's what you represent sometimes. I've been there on the other side. Drinking, having a good time. Here come the past. God, dog. They put this on there. Hey, what's going on? You ruining my good time. As other people say, you blowing my high, man. So what's, what's up? What you want to do? And so you represent that. And some people don't even know why. But in, what's in them hates you. It's that spirit. You try to figure out, well, why this person just don't like me? And that, no, and they hate you without cause. And so he said, if, 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 if I didn't come, if I didn't come with a the flashlight, they wouldn't have known that they was in darkness. But now they came with a the flashlight, now they hot. And guess what? They don't shoot. They, they shoot the messenger. The world will shoot the messenger. You can tell them all day. Well, I'm just saying what the word of God said. But now nah, it's coming out of your mouth. So I'm got off with you. And really they need to take it up with God. He that hated me hated my father also. That's self-explanatory. If I had not done among them the works which none of them, no other man had did, they had not sinned, but now have they both seen and hated me and my father. But this coming to pass that the world might be, that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law. They hated me without cause. Said it had to happen. It's written in this written. <clears throat> but when the comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the father, even the spirit of truth, which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of me. There's your litmus test. When you're, hear, when you're hearing someone and they're teaching or they're preaching or whatever it is, listen for Jesus. Uh, listen for Jesus. He said, the, he said they're gonna, he's going to testify of me. They're doing it under the unction of the Holy Spirit. They're going to testify of me. I've been in prayer meetings where pastors have been praying and everything and in his name. In whose name? Don't leave his name out. He bled and died so that we can have a unit. In whose name? In his name. We can be saying anybody's name. In name. Jethro, Rob, Tom. Say his name. He shall testify of me. And, I, and I, that's just me. I just, when people, when they, people do that perpetually, I get a check in my spirit to watch. I'm like, nah, you can't say his name, bro. Mm -hmm. We, we, nah, and, and I don't care who around. I, corporate prayer, Muslims, in the, I don't care. I'm going to say it. They're going to ask me to come up and pray. Talking about something, well, we don't really want to say uh, the name of Jesus. Uh, we, could you just say a general prayer uh, just in his name? I'm sorry. Take my name off that, uh, off that program. Well, um, you know, to be poli I called God, Jesus ain't called me to be politically correct. He called me to be a disciple. 
And so if I'm going to be persecuted, if I'm not going to be invited to this little breakfast or this little lunch hand or whatever, thank you, no problem. That's part of the persecution. All right, I don't need that. Need you to pat me on my back and say I'm in with the, the, the such and such pastors associate all that. That ain't gonna mean nothing. Well done, my good and faithful servant. If we don't hear those, all the plaques on the wall, all the appreciations, all the trophies and everything don't mean nothing. If we don't hear well done, my good and faithful servant. That's what we're working for. Amen. And ye also shall bear witness because ye have been.